channel. Thanks for checking this video out. For those of you who are catching me for the first time, I'm Liz Tolsma. By day, I'm an author of World War II fiction, but in the evenings and on weekends when I have some spare time, I love to be in the kitchen, especially doing some baking. Since my latest release, A Picture of Hope is set in France, and I've always been something of a Francophile, I decided to go ahead and make a series of videos with some of my favorite French desserts. So we're gonna start with Madeleine today. If you watch like the Great British Baking Show or something like that, you will see that they make a big deal out of this and how hard it is and everything. But I have found a great recipe that I will link to in the description box below that is super easy and they come out great and they taste delicious. So let's go ahead and get started with this. It's really very easy to kind of all throw together. You're going to start off with two eggs at room temperature. Now, if you forget to take your eggs out like I always do, you can just put them in warm water for a couple of minutes and they warm right up. So I'm just gonna put this into a blender or I have a Ninja or whatever you have that would work like that, a food processor, because this is sort of a dump and go recipe, which makes it really, really simple. Then you need six and a half tablespoons of butter that's been melted and cooled. So in that goes, you can see how simple this is. Then I have three quarters of a cup of gluten-free flour. Yeah, you can make these gluten-free. Since I'm gluten-free, I'm always looking for really great recipes. Use the Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one flour. In that goes. I have three quarters of a cup of sugar. One teaspoon of vanilla extract. Don't use the cheap imitation stuff. This is so much better and it really does make your madeleine a lot better. So that goes in. That's the real stuff. It smells really good. And then I have a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And finally, to give it a little brightness and a really good flavor, I have the zest of one large lemon here. And so I'm just gonna dump that in along with everything else. First time I made these, I forgot to put the lemon zest in. So I had a couple in the pan already. I just sprinkled some lemon zest on top of it and then I put the rest in. It worked, but it's better when you remember to put the lemon zest in. Okay, so there it all is in the mixer here. And the next step now is just to mix it up. Okay, so now we're ready to blend this up. And so I'm just gonna blend this until it's really nice and smooth. So make sure that everything is well blended and scrape it down a couple of times before you're finished. Okay, so I've blended it a little bit and now we need to scrape it down to make sure that everything gets really well incorporated. So I'm just going to take this, get that flour all down in there so that that gets well incorporated. Okay, so now it's all blended up. I've scraped it down a few times while I was blending it. And you can see it's pretty thick, but it's all nice and smooth and blended together. Okay, so now it's time to put it in the Madeleine pan. And I will, again, leave a link to this pan. This is a special Madeleine pan to make that special shape. And what you're really looking for is the hump on top. It looks like a humpback and this pan really does a nice job. It's not that expensive. It comes out really easily, but you can also use a small muffin tin and just put it in the bottom of the muffin tin. This just looks prettier and it turns out better. You get that really nice hump that's very classic with Madeline. And this wasn't that expensive. So I'm gonna scoop it out and you don't need to fill the whole Thing. I use a, a tablespoon, a regular tablespoon, and I just scoop it in there. And you don't need to smooth it out because it will just sort of fill the space as it bakes. So I'm just going to put this in here.
Okay, so you can see that I have them all scooped in here and you can see the first one I did is starting to fill the little space up right away. Now the next thing to do is just to bake them. Okay, so I'm going to put this into an oven that's been preheated to 350 degrees and I'm going to bake them for eight to 10 minutes until they're golden brown and they have that nice hump on them. So in they go. Okay, so I just took them out of the oven and for my oven, that was 10 minutes. You can see the beautiful classic humps here that they've gotten. And that was just with dumping it all into the blender and blending it up all in one, super easy. So now we're going to leave them to cool here for a little while and then we'll turn them out of the pan. We're almost done and almost ready to taste them. Now comes the moment of truth, whether they'll come out of the pan. This is a nonstick pan, but even to be safe, I buttered and floured it so that they should just slide out pretty easily with just a tap of the pan. So let's see what happens. Oh yeah, they're coming out really nice and easily. One more to go. If they get stuck like that, just a little tap is great. And we're just gonna leave them to cool now for a while until they're completely cool. Okay, so they have cooled. I've put them on a plate. Now you can see these beautiful little lines in there that you get from that Madeleine pan. So it's really worth it to get these really pretty shapes here. I'm gonna dust it with some powdered sugar, just very lightly, you don't need a whole lot of that. And I'm just gonna go around here quickly. Now, I forgot to say at the beginning, but Madeline are really kind of a cross between a cookie and a cake. It's hard to say what they are. And you'll see in a second here. Let me take one of these beautiful desserts and I will break one open and show you again on the back, there's that nice little hump and I'll break it open here. You can kind of see it's very, almost cake-like inside, but it kind of has this little crispy crust on the outside. So that's what a madeleine looks like. I'm gonna taste it, see if they're any good. Mm. Absolutely delicious. That lemon is in there, but it's not too strong. And even with the gluten-free flour, you can see that it doesn't fall apart. It's not crumbling or anything like that. They hold together really nicely. You can't tell at all that these are gluten-free. So I hope that you enjoyed this video, that you learned how to make these, that you go ahead and make them yourself. They are really delicious and really worth it. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.